Have you ever asked yourself, with a mix of frustration and concern, why aren't my feedlot cattle gaining weight as they should? You invest time, money, effort, and the results on the scale simply don't reflect your dedication. Every pound, not gained, is a blow to your profitability. Every day that passes without the expected progress is a lost opportunity. That feeling of doing everything possible and still not seeing the pounds accumulate can be disheartening. Today, we're going to tackle this problem head on. We're not going to review the basics you already know by heart. We're going to dive deep into beef cattle production to unearth those common causes, those silent saboteurs holding back your cattle's potential. We'll discover why your animals might be stalled and, most importantly, how you can reverse that situation. Get ready, because we're going to unveil not just common mistakes, but the precise strategies that will transform a deficient or mediocre fattening program into one that truly propels your business to the next level. If you're looking to gain more meat of superior quality and finally understand what's going wrong, you're in the right place. This isn't just an analysis of problems, it's your roadmap to the solution a direct investment in the future and prosperity of your cattle. Operation. Let's start identifying and correcting those causes preventing you from achieving success. Inadequate genetics. The hidden Achilles heel. If your animals are struggling to gain weight, one of the first and most fundamental causes could be hidden in their DNA. Not all cattle are born with the same potential for efficient fattening. Trying to fatten animals with a poor genetic base is like trying to build a skyscraper on weak foundations. Failure is almost inevitable. Are you choosing the right breeds and crosses? Ignoring breed specialization is a costly mistake. If your market demands quality in marbling, but you insist on breeds with low potential for these traits, you'll be fighting an uphill battle. British breeds like Angus and Hereford are famous for their premium meat. If you're looking for volume and muscle yield, continental breeds like Charolais, Limousin, or Simmental are your allies. Do you operate in harsh climates, crosses with Zebu, Brahmin, Nellor, or adapted synthetic breeds, Brangus, Brayford, will give you the necessary hardiness, but be careful not to overly sacrifice fattening potential. Not finding the genetic balance adapted to your system, your market, and your environment is a direct cause of poor performance. Do you invest in proven sires or settle for what's available? A bull without performance data, EPDs, UIBVs, or with mediocre values is a lottery you rarely win. Using breeding animals without an outstanding genetic history for growth, feed efficiency, and carcass quality is sowing the seeds of disappointment. Every calf born without that superior genetic drive is a lost opportunity for pounds and quality. Remember, an elite breeding animal isn't an expense. It's the most profitable long-term investment. Do you buy calves for fattening based solely? On price, acquiring cheap calves without assessing their conformation, apparent health, uniformity, and crucially, their possible genetic origin is a recipe for disaster. Calves with poor bone development, scarce muscling, or of unknown and likely. Inferior genetics simply will not respond efficiently to the best feeding program. That initial saving will turn into greater losses at the end of the cycle. Deficient or unbalanced nutrition, the seized engine. Once you believe you have the genetics right, if the cattle still aren't gaining weight, the next major culprit is usually nutrition. The saying, you are what you eat, is an unforgiving law in cattle fattening. A diet that isn't meticulously calculated is like trying to run a high-performance engine on poor quality fuel or in the wrong proportion. Is your energy and protein balance truly fine-tuned? Energy drives growth. Protein builds muscle. An imbalance, whether a deficit, most common, or a costly and inefficient excess, will halt performance in its tracks. 
Are you adjusting metabolizable energy, ME, and crude protein, CP levels according to the fattening stage, starter, grower, finisher, out live, weight and expected gain? Feeding a newly weaned calf the same as a steer ready for slaughter is a colossal mistake that limits potential. Is the quality of your forages and supplements a priority or an afterthought? Many ranchers underestimate the impact of low digestibility or low nutritive value forages. In intensive fattening systems, relying on poor quality hay or silage, or on supplements chosen solely for their low cost without considering their actual contribution and synergy with the base diet, is a direct cause of poor performance. The secret isn't just to fill the rumen, but to nourish efficiently. Are you ignoring minerals and vitamins, microminerals, copper, zinc, selenium, etc., and macrominerals, calcium, phosphorus, etc., along with vitamins, a, D, E, are the silent catalysts for growth and health. A deficiency, however minor it may seem, can create a metabolic bottleneck, affecting the utilization of major nutrients and immune function. Not supplementing strategically based on forage analysis and specific needs is leaving pounds on the table. Is water truly fresh and abundant or a forgotten nutrient? It seems obvious, but a lack of constant access to clean, fresh water is a surprisingly common cause of low feed intake and, therefore, low weight gain. Insufficient, dirty, or hard-to-access water points are direct saboteurs. How do you manage your feed bunks and feeding frequency? Excessive competition for bunk space? Dirty bunks that cause refusal or inadequate feeding frequency in intensive systems can reduce intake and efficiency. Inconsistency and lack of observation in this regard are mistakes that cost pounds. Precarious health. The bleeding investment. You can have the best genetics and the perfect diet, but if your animals are sick or parasitized, they won't gain weight efficiently. Poor health is a black hole that sucks away your investment and your operations efficiency. An animal fighting diseases or parasites diverts energy and nutrients that should go to meat production. Are your vaccination and deworming programs rigorous or reactive? Waiting for problems to appear before acting is a waste of time and money. Not having a vaccination schedule adapted to prevalent diseases in your area clostridial diseases, respiratory issues, and a strategic deworming program. Rotating. Active ingredients is inviting losses. Prevention isn't an expense, it's the best investment. Are you underestimating the impact of external parasites? Flies, ticks, and other ectoparasites not only cause stress and irritation, reducing feed intake and rest, they also transmit diseases. Not implementing effective control measures is allowing these tiny vampires to drain your profits. Are you quick in the early detection and isolation of sick animals? The inability of staff to recognize early signs of illness, apathy, loss of appetite, or the lack of an adequate isolation area allows diseases to spread and losses to multiply. Late treatment is less effective and more costly. Is your biosecurity a serious protocol or a formality? Allowing new animals in without quarantine, not controlling vehicle and people access, or neglecting the cleaning and disinfection of facilities is opening the door to pathogens that can decimate your herd and your fattening efforts. Poor management and animal stress. The invisible brake stress is the silent enemy and one of the main culprits when cattle don't gain weight. Stressed animals release cortisol, a catabolic hormone that negatively impacts weight gain, feed efficiency, and even meat quality. What's your daily handling like? Gentle or rough? Shouting, hitting, excessive use of cattle prods, and abrupt movements. When handling cattle, generate acute and chronic stress that directly translates into lower performance. Poorly designed facilities that hinder the calm flow of animals are a constant source of stress. Are you respecting their living space and appropriate density? 
Overcrowding is a common cause of social stress, competition for resources, and a higher incidence of disease. Not ensuring the minimum recommended space per animal in pens, at feed bunks, and at water troughs is counterproductive. Do you offer environmental comfort or let the weather wreak havoc? Lack of shade in hot climates causes heat stress, which drastically reduces feed intake. In cold climates, the absence of protection from wind and excessive rain, or the lack of dry bedding, diverts body energy towards maintaining temperature. Instead of growth, do you group your animals intelligently or chaotically? Constantly mixing groups or forming very heterogeneous lots in terms of weight, age, or sex increases competition, dominance behavior, and general stress. This negatively affects more submissive animals who won't access feed adequately. Lack of monitoring and records. Navigating blind. If you don't measure, you can't improve, much less identify why your cattle aren't gaining weight. Operating without precise data is like trying to navigate a storm without a compass or map. The lack of detailed information is a fundamental cause of the inability to correct problems. Do you conduct periodic weigh-ins or only at the beginning and end? Without regular weigh-ins, monthly or bi-monthly, it's impossible to calculate average daily gain, ADG, and detect low-performing animals or lot problems in time. You'll be reacting to problems too late. Do you calculate feed conversion ratio, FCR, or only look at feed cost? Not knowing how much feed your cattle consume to gain a pound of weight is ignoring one of the most critical indicators of efficiency and profitability. A high FCR could be devouring your profits without you realizing it. Do you keep detailed records or rely on your memory? Not recording entry dates, weights, type and quantity of feed, health treatments, costs, etc. deprives you of essential information to make informed decisions and analyze what's working and what's not. Do you analyze your results at the end of the cycle or just sell and restart? If at slaughter time you don't record final weight, carcass yield, and if possible grading, and you don't compare this data with your objectives and previous cycles, you lose the opportunity to identify critical areas for improvement and the root causes of suboptimal performance. Conclusion From Frustration to Profitable Action Identifying why your feedlot cattle aren't performing as expected is the crucial first step. As we've seen, the causes can be multiple and often interconnected. Genetics that don't measure up, nutrition that doesn't nourish, neglected health, stressful management, or simply a lack of information to make correct decisions. Ignoring these areas is allowing your profitability to slip through your fingers. But the good news is that each of these causes has a solution. By systematically addressing genetics, precisely optimizing nutrition, fortifying health, prioritizing animal welfare, and managing your operation based on concrete data, you won't just solve the problem of low weight gain. You'll be transforming your production methods, improving overall efficiency, reducing unnecessary costs, and finally, catapulting the profitability and sustainability of your cattle business. The knowledge to identify these common failures is now in your hands. Dedication and corrective action will make the difference. Did you identify any of these common causes in your own operation? Do you suspect other factors are holding back your cattle? We want to hear from you. Leave your comments and questions below. Share your experience and which of these points you think you need to address urgently. And if you found this analysis valuable and want to keep discovering how to solve the most common problems and optimize every aspect of your cattle operation, don't wait any longer. Subscribe to our channel right now. Activate the notification bell so you don't miss any of our future practical guides and share this video with other ranchers who are also struggling to improve their results. Join our community and let's transform challenges into successes together.